next speaker is uh, Gennaro Monacelli. He's the Global Simulation and Material Engineering Manager for CNH Industrial. He has covered a variety of roles in his career, starting from research and development at Fiat Chrysler Automobile, then Fiat Research and Fiat Industrial, where he was the Simulation Director for the Agricultural and Construction Machinery. Then he was President of Altra SPA, which is the Center of Excellence for the Study of Alternative Tractions. And finally, his CNH Industrial. So, Gennaro, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. Thank you for attending this uh, presentation. And thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor uh, Odorizzi, for your kind uh, introduction. OK, I will uh, talk um, about uh, the future of simulation towards 2050. First of all, I would like to introduce uh, our company. Uh, CNH Industrial is a global leader in capital goods. And uh, uh, we uh, cover the business of agricultural equipment, construction, commercial vehicles, and uh, powertrain. Let me give you some numbers about uh, our company. So uh, we are uh, about uh, 62,000 uh, employees with uh, 12 brands, as you have seen uh, before. And um, our revenue is about uh, 27 billion. 10% uh, of this one are, um, I mean, 10% of our people are dedicated to uh, research and development. This is uh, the distribution of uh, our uh, people in the world. We are close to all our customers. You see that our company is very uh, present in uh, uh, Europe with 60% uh, of uh, our uh, workforce, while we have also uh, a big presence in uh, NAFTA, uh, LATAM, and uh, uh, APAC. So uh, it's important to give you uh, the overview of our research and development center. We have uh, um, 59, uh, res 53 research and development center and uh, 29 in uh, EMEA, 12 in, uh, LATAM, in um, NAFTA, 7 in uh, LATAM, and 5 in APAC. So as, uh, our, uh, as uh, the previous uh, speaker said, uh, sustainability is the key point of uh, all uh, the modern industries. And also for us, uh, is a very important uh, um, topic. This year, for uh, the eighth consecutive year, we were appointed as an industry leader for uh, a Dow Jones Sustainability Index. And here you can see the main driver of our company for sustainability. So fuel, biofuel, sustainable farming, environmental protection, and uh, people engagement. But why we said uh, 2015? Okay, I just uh, give you an introduction uh, about why is so important uh, this data. Because if you see in the table, um, in uh, year 1000, our uh, the inhabitants in the world in, uh, in the world were 400 million, and it took. Uh, just uh, uh, 750 to double. But it took from uh, uh, 18 to 19, 23, only 119 years to double the population. And if you see that uh, from 1960 to 2000, it took only 40 years. So this is um, a dramatic uh, um, growth of the population. Today we are uh, 7.5 billion. And uh, you know that the most populous uh, uh, country is uh, China with 1.4 and India is 1.3 billion. 
while uh, Italy is uh, uh, 53 with about, about uh, 60 million. So this is the, the representation of the growth of the population in the world. And uh, you see that uh, in two, 2050, we expect it to be uh, at most uh, 10 billion. So this is a dramatic growth. And uh, just to give you an idea of what happens every day on the, on the heart, I stopped uh, my time at uh, uh, 9.56 uh, of uh, 3 October, and I was able to see that uh, this data about uh, uh, the heart. So basically, we have uh, uh, 93 million of uh, people increase every year. So we will uh, be in 2050 9.6 billion, most 10 billion. We will uh, have the need for 30% of calorie increase for per person. Uh, and uh, we, so therefore, we need to increase, uh, to double uh, the production of food. And so how we can do this one without uh, overwhelm our planet? I think that the solution is uh, in the digital uh, transformation. We see that uh, uh, the computing uh, power is increasing a lot and also are increasing the number of data that we are achieving from uh, agriculture. So what is the simulation? So I enter in the topic of this conference. <laughs> Why simulation is important also for this uh, topic? In parallel to industrial revolution, you, I think that you have seen a thousand of times this slide about the industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution. We have also uh, an industrial revolution, a revolution in, uh, in the agriculture. And we call it uh, digital farming, agriculture 4.0, where we go from uh, mechanization green revolution, precision agriculture, to digital farming. So this is, uh, uh, our company is a leader in agricultural uh, machinery, and we are using a lot of simulation. I come as a, a professor introduced to me, I come from FCA when I entered in agricultural area, I saw that the simulation was not so used, but in the, in the last 10 years, we made uh, a big increase in using all uh, the automotive uh, uh, and aeronautic tools also in, uh, in the agricultural business. And here uh, you can see that uh, we are using all uh, the technologies, starting from uh, performance simulation, uh, virtual reality, multi-body dynamics, uh, and, and so on. Uh, start in order, and uh, we arrive also to simulate all uh, the digital uh, factory. Okay, one of the, our first goal was to eliminate uh, all uh, the uh, physical tests that are very expensive and are not sustainable. So simulation is the most sustainable uh, uh, technology. We reduce the number of uh, physical tests, we reduce the number of uh, uh, vehicles necessary, prototy prototype builds necessary to validate the product. And uh, today we are uh, uh, almost uh, uh, eliminated. We have already almost eliminated all uh, the, the traditional uh, bump track with the virtual uh, bump track. Here we use uh, all uh, the multi-body uh, techniques. And uh, this uh, kind of uh, traditional uh, test were, let me say, completely eliminated. Try to imagine uh, how, how, many, how much uh, CO2 we have to produce to build uh, a prototype and uh, to do this uh, uh, very expensive test. 
uh, we have to run 2,000 times this test uh, around or 300 times uh, running about uh, on uh, over uh, bump track test. In this way, we can do this simulation, this test just in the virtual. And we save a lot, tons of uh, CO2. So we use a lot of virtual reality in order to put uh, the brand, the customer, the dealer in the loop of uh, our product development. So these are uh, real sessions that uh, we have uh, organized first with, uh, with uh, our uh, brand portfolio management team, comparing different solutions. We have also innovative uh, a simulator to uh, parametric simulator where you can test the product two, three years before the, the real the market launch. And we can uh, um, evaluate in this virtual environment all the different uh, solutions. At this point, we see that the virtual simulation has more content than physical uh, prototypes. And uh, you can uh, easily imagine why. And uh, the build of uh, the request of uh, physical mockups has been uh, reduced tremendously in the last years. Okay, these are other examples of immersive simulation. We, we use a lot also in a construction environment. And uh, practically we can simulate all uh, uh, the new product. Also uh, the serviceability and the contents of a new machine. The difference between us uh, and uh, uh, agricultural machine environment and the car environment is that uh, more or less a car has uh, always uh, the same architecture. We, use, uh, uh, we, have, we have to use this technology for uh, different products. Each of one has a completely different architecture and the usage. And, uh, and moreover, uh, the budget uh, is very limited to develop these, uh, these uh, products compared to a car where uh, we talk about the billions in, a billion in, in, uh, in the area of a car. Here we talk uh, uh, in terms of a million. So there is a different factor, but the needs uh, are the same, the same performance. So we use uh, uh, computational fluidodynamics to simulate uh, cab defrost here urea melting in the tank. We are able to, to simulate the melting process, the urea injection in the, in the after treatment system, under root cooling, and also residue ma ma uh, management in the uh, combined machine. But, uh, for other uh, application, uh, we use also particle-based model uh, in order to uh, evaluate the, uh, the lubrication. Uh, and uh, these uh, analyses are uh, good in terms of uh, computational time. The, these are a very good alternative to uh, computational fluidodynamics uh, uh, Navier stock approach. Cab design is intended, uh, is done uh, in order to optimize all uh, the, the, the driver comfort in his whole operation. So we, we have a good correlation between uh, the physical operation that uh, uh, the driver does, the operator does during uh, all his maneuver, checking uh, the implement, uh, and so on. And we are able uh, here to simulate all of this, but we use also a special uh, uh, environment where uh, we see the person using some uh, camera and a tracking system. He can do the same operation in the virtual, and we can take this point 
uh, to feed uh, the virtual mannequins so we can understand exactly for each operation which is the comfort of the, the passenger, of the, the, the driver. And here you see that uh, we are using all uh, the package for uh, uh, comfort posture optimization. Here uh, we are also integrating system modeling to evaluate the performance of the vehicles. And as uh, our previous speaker said, we use also a uh, model in the loop, hardware in the loop, software in the loop, and we use this model in the uh, hardware and loop model, but we have done something more. We have integrated this one with uh, a dynamic simulator, so we can put the man in the loop and uh, to test that all our algorithms are working fine. We can test the software with this simulator uh, very in advance. This simulator is still in uh, design phase, but uh, this was a prototype that was uh, realized only for academic scope, but uh, using real, real uh, vehicle multi-body model, we can optimize. Agricultural machinery, uh, agricultural machines works with different materials. We work with the soil, with the crop, the seeds, residue, and so on. So this is, for example, is an example of uh, uh, the optimization of the residue extractor of a sugarcane machine. So here we simulate Here uh, we simulate uh, the can that is uh, chopped in uh, small uh, pieces and then uh, there is an extractor that uh, uh, push away uh, the residue. So uh, these uh, uh, particles are rigid body but we are also working on a flexible uh, body because you see that the can is a flexible body so in this way, we are able not only to see what happened when we cut uh, the, the cane, but we are also understanding what happened with the, the flexible uh, body. And uh, this is very important for our business. We are also using a model to simulate of these particles to simulate uh, uh, the protection of the particle, of the crop, but also the wearing of the tools uh, when they interact with the crop. This is another example of a baler. This is another machine. You see that the bale uh, needs to be, um, this bale comes from uh, the compression room. So we have a model of uh, a particle based with uh, biomaterial uh, properties that to simulate what happens when uh, the bale is compressed and then it is uh, released, released from uh, the compression uh, room. As uh, Professor Roderizzi said before, digital twin is uh, one of the emerging technology and all of us are interested to this uh, uh, to this uh, technology. We are uh, uh, already uh, trying to create all uh, the digital models, the real-time model of our product. The problem for us is that uh, on uh, uh, Internet of Things is not uh, fully applied in the farm because there is uh, no internet in some area so and uh, the sensing is not, uh, uh, the sensors are not completely developed. But uh, the future is that is to have a complete virtual model. The physical world is completely mirrored in the, in, the, in the cloud, and we want to cover with the digital twin all the product life cycle, starting from product to uh, test, manufacture, and service. 
So with a cab autonomous so tractor in the farm's the, fleet, the farmers effectively have two machines in one. Uh, in our area. It can be used the to complete tasks area. which are not yet autonomous suitable for automation. And then, when the operators finish this task, it becomes an autonomous tractor. With CNH Industrial's latest autonomous technology concept, the tractor is able to make its own way to the field along mapped private on-farm paths before it starts to work remotely on its own. We know that modern technology has improved the lives of farmers and on ours to bring in the harvest or to get the next crop planted. Autonomous tractors make the most of sometimes short weather windows and can extend the working day to a full 24 hours. 24 hours per day. A fully interactive so interface has been developed to control the autonomous tractors with the immediate the and duration. secure recording and, and transfer of farm data. Is, uh, that Farmers are able to use software which automatically plots the most efficient in-field paths, than, uh, use combinations of implement widths, raise or lower the... And there are less limitations uh, than in uh, traffic conditions. Okay, uh, in parallel with the automotive uh, uh, roadmap that uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Mario Felice showed before, we have uh, a similar uh, uh, roadmap for autonomous vehicles in the farming area. And we see that until uh, level three, we have uh, assisted autonomy operator assisted by uh, algorithm based on artificial intelligence that can improve uh, the productivity of the machine. But uh, we see that from level four, we will have uh, unmanned vehicles, just supervised by someone. And finally, in level five, we will have complete autonomous tractors and combines that works together with implement in the field. As I told you before, uh, the, the, the benefits are uh, uh, a lot. This machine can, these machines can work 24 hours per day. So in terms of uh, coming back to our uh, main challenge, the simulation, it's clear that when we uh, say that unmanned vehicles, we have also to understand how to validate uh, these vehicles without a man. Uh, and uh, here uh, um, we have a big, uh, a big issue about uh, uh, how to validate these vehicles. For example, I know that uh, in automotive uh, area for other system, they are spending a lot of money to validate this system. Uh, also in our environment, we are trying to define uh, uh, the environment, how is it possible to validate completely these uh, uh, vehicles. And uh, we need to move from a deterministic approach to stochastic approach, because we have to consider uh, hundreds of scenarios. We have to simulate uh, uh, sensors, we have to simulate humans in the field, we have to simulate uh, uh, different uh, field conditions, and so on. But the approach is that uh, simulation will be uh, the key element of this validation process. I know that also in automotive environment, uh, they expect that uh, now we shift from uh, about 20, 25% of a virtual uh, validation test to 80%, 85% of virtual validation. And uh, this is uh, uh, also for us, uh, we expect that in the future, in the next 20 years, uh, we will move uh, towards uh, an area where 80% uh, of the tests will be done completely virtually. And for the physical uh, uh, part, we will uh, use uh, uh, autonomous vehicles also for testing. And uh, so in this way, we are uh, able to do some uh, 
physical tests that are completely aligned with our uh, plan. We can control uh, the maneuvers. We can uh, uh, take all uh, the data to validate the model. And finally, in the, in the field, we will, uh, we will uh, uh, check uh, the, the real conditions or a very uh, unexpected uh, situation. So this is uh, the need of a model that we have to develop a model. And our uh, key uh, area is soil modeling, but also crop modeling, which is the most difficult area to simulate today for us. Uh, on top of uh, uh, what uh, also previous speaker says, co-simulation, because uh, um, in the past we were used, we were able to manage multi-body uh, simulation, vehicle simulation, vehicle dynamic simulation. But now we have to simulate the interaction between the tire and the soil in real time. But also we have to to simulate the interaction with the crop, with the tools, and so on. So uh, this is a big challenge in terms of uh, simulation, but also in terms of uh, computing uh, capabilities. And this is uh, the approach that uh, we are uh, very schematic approach. So starting from our uh, database, which will be the core knowledge of uh, each company about uh, scenario, vehicle, and sensors, we define uh, the complete uh, virtual assessment, and we will uh, use uh, our models in all of these tools. As I told you before, software in the loop, hardware in the loop, functional bench testing, static simulator, and dynamic simulator to provide uh, uh, assessment results. But also, we use, uh, uh, as I told you before, a specific field test and the test bench to validate the model and finally to arrive to the complete assessment of these uh, autonomous uh, vehicles. It is uh, simple to say, but it is very difficult to implement. So I wanted to, to uh, I'm almost at the end of this presentation. Here on the top you see the autonomous vehicles of Case IH. Here the concept is to uh, this was a provocation. We did a, a tractor without a cab. So we took, uh, we eliminated the man from uh, the machine. But uh, how to validate uh, this uh, vehicle without the man? So we need to simulate everything. And the big challenge here is to simulate uh, the soil, large scale simulation of the soil and also the interaction of the tool with the soil. And here you see uh, the simulation of these vehicles in the soil. So I'm uh, uh, at the end of this presentation. I hope I give you um, some uh, good uh, information. And, uh, but I wanted to uh, go back to the previous uh, point of this presentation, uh, how to feed 10 billion people, 2 billion more uh, in a, a very short time. Uh, and uh, I wanted to remember you uh, what, uh, uh, oh, before this one, I wanted to give you the challenge that we have in this digital area. We have said that uh, uh, digital farming is one of the key points for uh, uh, doubling the, the production of food. But uh, today we have still some limitation in terms of internet coverage, in terms of uh, uh, the background of uh, the farmer. They do not have uh, a lot of skills in computer science, so we need to uh, increase these, uh, these skills. Communication should be upgraded. Digital Twin will be the engine of the innovation. I think that all the new innovation in this area will be driven by this powerful concept of uh, Digital Twin. And uh, the company that will invest in Digital Twin will be the winning companies. 
autonomous vehicles have uh, already have uh, the problem of safety and also of the liability liability which will be the most difficult topic to manage more than the technical one and this will require new skills and new new professional new professional skills to be developed so uh, I wanted to remind you that uh, one man, Norbert, Norman uh, Borla, in 1970, when he won, he won the, the Nobel Prize, uh, he is considered the, the, uh, the father of the uh, Green Revolution. He said that, uh, however, the first essential component of social justice is adequate food for all mankind. And the food is the moral right for, of all who are born in this world. So I wanted to conclude my presentation with this sentence. Thank you to everybody.